Hi, I'm Rafi Wilkinson with Indiana Dunes National Park. I'm here at Tolliston Dunes, one of my personal favorite trails here. Uh, we have over 50 miles of trails and 14 different trail systems. And this is really one of our most overlooked. This is a 2.9 mile trail and it really gets a lot of varied habitats from wetlands to some of the really best oak savanna we have here and really nice views. And this time of year, uh, early summer, we also have great lupins and prickly pear cactus to see and it's just absolutely a great hike and on a busy weekend I really recommend coming here instead of waiting in line for other places so follow me as we take this hike. So we've really just gotten started on this trail and already there's many interesting things to see. For example here we have a lot of black cherry trees kind of have this very distinctive bark that's peeling up. Go down the trail a little bit further here and we're going to see really one of the showcases of this trail are the purple lupins that come up every spring, sort of early summer. Just gorgeous and we're going to see thousands of these blanketing the hillsides a little bit further into the trail. And we have some yellow pacoons here, very very flashy. And then one of the things I really like about this trail is it's one of the easiest places to see prickly pear cactus. And although, you know, very found throughout the United States, they really like these sort of sandy soils here in the Indiana Dunes, and we find them everywhere. I always find it amazing that they survive the winter quite well. They survive uh, prescribed burns very well, and they will have beautiful flowers here uh, within the next month. So just here, just in this little bit of area, this is what Indiana Dunes is all about, is this really condensed habitats and plants to see here. So we've arrived here at really the kind of the start of the trail into the dunes. We've had a very nice sort of flat walk and sort of seen a lot of the prickly pear cactus and stuff. Uh, one thing to note here as well is that even though we're Indiana dunes and we're in Indiana, you really need to be prepared for anything here. You know, we obviously have all four seasons and we have dry weather and we certainly have wet weather. And so uh, obviously a rugged pair of hiking boots or something, you should expect to either see anything from you know, here we have loose sand right up against a flooded trail and, we, and those change week to week, month to month. So you just gotta be ready for it. But we can see we're gonna be in for a real tree. We have nice lupins here that are gonna lead us into this trail. So let's see what's coming up next. So we've now arrived at a really cool feature of this trail. It's called the Inland Marsh. It's part of our extensive wetland system that permeates throughout the Indiana Dunes. This wetland here was formed around 3,500 years ago when we had a, a, a lake level drop, leaving these 3,500 year old dunes here. The water table rose up to, to, uh, to create this marsh and it's just filled with birds and other aquatic plants. In fact, when we just arrived here, a mallard and some wood ducks fl uh, flew off. So, uh, and I do want to point out that we'll see that it, it, being that it is a marsh, the water can be high or it can be low, and so obviously plan accordingly and wear boots, but well worth it and just a, a real gem on this trail. So I'm at another point along the boardwalk section. We're over the inland marsh here. And what I really want to point out is we can see very here uh, really an encasing dune. This is all part of the, the Tolliston dunes. These are all parabolic dunes. And as the wind was blowing, it, it pushed the sand into these arcs. What's unique here is that these are not the same direction as today's dunes. So we're still forming these parabolic dunes, but this is part of a 3,500 year old layer in which the wind was different. The wind was more out of the west, northwest, as opposed to mainly out of the north when we have our strong storms. So this is evidence of, a, of an earlier time, again around 3,500 years old. But we see what it's left us here is as the dunes formed, the water table actually came up to form these beautiful wetlands. This one over here just covered in, in lovely grasses.
So I've stopped along the trail here because I found some pretty uh, interesting things to point out. Certainly first and foremost here we have our lupins. We really just blanket the oak savanna here and uh, I think they're just beautiful and they're part of the legume family. They've been used as a food source really worldwide for over 3,000 years. And they also are very important for a lot of butterflies. During the larval stage of butterflies, this is a food source for them. So they're very dependent upon the lupin. Right above this here, we have a sassafras tree that's starting to grow, uh, known for obviously for making a tea out of it. But uh, one of the interesting things about sassafras is they're one of the few trees that have very distinct leaf shapes. We call them mittens. Like So here we have this. They can look like this. They can look like this or here they can look together. So very interesting. And lastly, we have more of our pecoons here that are also sort of spread throughout this really delicate yellow flower that really just adds a lot of vibrant color to the, to the trail. So here's some really cool plants. Obviously we have this really showy, this is red columbine. Uh, interesting to note, it's actually poisonous and can be toxic and so they actually recommend not to to touch it certainly if you're going to work with a lot of the plants but it's obviously very showy and provides a lot of uh, contrast against the green here. We have some raspberry growing here and then we have something called Solomon seal. What's interesting this is called false Solomon seal because the flower is on top or showy where the true Solomon seal the flower would be underneath less showy. So just you know obviously just in this little area we have so much going on. Let's see what else we can find. So what an incredible area, right? It doesn't get any better than this. We just have patches of, of lupins everywhere. We've actually arrived at the trail junction here for the cutoff. So we came from the parking lot, went up that first hill, we came to our trailhead. I always like to do the trail counterclockwise. We found the wetlands there, and now we've arrived here. If I go straight here, it's gonna add about an extra mile onto the loop, well worth it if you have the time. The rest of this is just gonna be sort of undulating through the, the Tolleson dunes. Taking a, a left here is going to shorten about by about a mile. It uh, still offers a really nice ridgeline view, but your choice depends on how much time you have. Either way, you're going to get this just incredible display of the lupins here for us. Of all the spots in Indiana Dunes National Park, I really love this high area here at Tolleston Dunes. Uh, we're high up top of Dune Ridge, and we have these great views down. This is called oak savanna. It's a pretty rare habitat. There used to be over 50 million acres of this in the United States. There's now less than 100,000 acres. And here at Indiana Dunes, we do maintain and restore about 1,000 of those acres. In 2014, we were part of a $1 million effort with Save the Dunes, Shirley Hines Land Trust, and the Nature Conservancy to restore this, and it's an ongoing project. What makes uh, the oak savanna so interesting is that it's very sparse. We can see we have a lot of light down. There's not a lot of understory here. We have all these lupins growing. But left alone, this will come up into a mature forest. And so by lightning, by Native Americans, and by now us doing prescribed burning, fire is really important to these, this habitat. It won't be here without fire. And so we do maintain this now, and it provides this wonderful understory. And it's just one of the critical habitats here at Indiana Dunes and one of my absolute favorite places to be in the park. So one of the interesting things about Indiana Dunes is, of course, topology, geography, and so much of it is hills and sand dunes. And we can see that here, obviously, undulating terrain like this. But uh, if you ever see a flat spot, I'm going to walk over here. You know, you got to ask yourself, how can this be so flat, knowing that it was just sand blowing around and forming the dunes? And unfortunately, what we have is an area of sand mining. This was very, very popular throughout from the late 1800s uh, through the mid 1900s and some actually still continues today but we at the National Park we use those for our parking lot so for instance where our Tolston Dunes parking lot is flat great for a parking lot because of a sand mine. West Beach our largest 600 car parking lot completely flat that was completely sand mined out so you know this park is obviously we try to capitalize on wherever we have had human interference before with this and then celebrate the natural areas. Wow, I just finished up a great hike here at Tolleson Dunes. Saw the lupins, they were just magnificent today. 
But I do want to point out this hike is really great year round. I love hiking it in the winter time when there's snow on it, spring and the fall. Uh, just remember, uh, like all of our hikes here, just, just come prepared, bring water, expect hot conditions or cold conditions or sometimes, you know, like wa deep water like I saw today. And I also really want to encourage you, this is just one of 14 different trail systems. We have over 50 miles of great hikes here at Indiana Dunes National Park.